thank you very much for agreeing to speak to the ILPN, um, Leah. So uh, we're here at the Transforming Care Conference in uh, Milan. And if you could introduce yourself first of all, please. Yes, my name is Leah Graf, and I work at the Danes National Institute for Local and Regional Government Research. And what's your role there? I do research into primarily um, elder care uh, and primarily reablement in the Danish home care. Okay. So could you just describe what you do in terms, you know, of a layperson? What where you could explain about the kind of data that you use? Okay, yes. I uh, work on various projects, um, often evaluations of some elder care project in the in municipality, and I do qualitative studies. And I conduct a lot of interviews with both the elder persons receiving home care and with care workers. That's primarily what I do. Okay. And how would you describe the long-term care system in Denmark? in terms of how it works, how it's funded, and so on? Well, the long-term care system is much public funded. Um, it's, it's performed in the municipalities, in each of the municipalities. Um, and we have home care for home-dwelling older adults. Um, and we have, we have care homes also, um, which are, are, are used less in Denmark than other places. People stay at home for as long as possible <laughs> uh, with Sorry. extensive home care. Yeah. Um, okay, and what would you say are the three main policy priorities for long term care policy challenges in your country? Well, the main policy at the moment is well, there's three. The one is that everybody should stay in home at their own, own home uh, as long as possible. Um, and that's why we have such extensive home care in place. Um, and the second is reablement, which is uh, a very important part of, of Danish policy at the moment. Um, and it has been actually for for taking home. Um, and since January 2015, it's been implemented in the legislation, so each municipality are obliged now to offer reablement courses to to elder people in need of home care services. And the third is we have a large focus at the moment on dementia, since uh, two out of three residents in residential care suffers from dementia. So that's a big issue also. So what what is the quality or the standard of uh, home care on a national level? Is it uh, are there inconsistencies? In different no, areas? Or? No, no, no. I, th I think uh, everybody would agree that Denmark has a very high level of quality of care and mm. high level of provision of care. So, what are the challenges uh, the in challenges, delivering that? One of the challenges is that Denmark, as the rest of the world, is an aging society. Mm. So, they get more and more elder people. So, there are concerns about um, how we should be able to pay for this in the future. Okay. Great. Okay, and um, would you say that those challenges have changed in the last five years? I'm not sure if they have changed, but there's more awareness, awareness especially about the dementia issue. Um, a lot of political plans regarding dementia, both in, uh, both in home care hospitals and, and, and in residential care. So that, 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 that's, that's a new issue mm -hmm. popping up, I would say. Okay, and if you had an opportunity to introduce one new policy in this area in the future, what would you like to see? I would like to see some policies uh, around care workers. Um, I, I think, as I said before, also with the aging of society, and so the, the, the group of care workers are also getting older. And there's some issue about how to retain staff and, and how to make sure you have enough and proper educated staff in the future. Oh, okay. Some awareness about that would be essential. Okay, and would you like to see any particular research projects in the future if you didn't, ha if you don't have to worry about uh, funding to address some of those issues? Well, I think reablement re in Denmark is seen as a way to to make elder care sustainable. Um, 
because it's supposed to help people be more independent for a longer time. Um, it should be good for the economy, but more importantly, it should be better for the elder people who could be more uh, independent and, and self-reliant. So, uh, but also we see in, in some of the research we're doing that, that working with reablement actually improves the working condition for the care workers. So that could be interesting to look more into. But also we have a lot of uh, short evidence and short time spent showing that reablement improves quality of life and functional ability for the elder person. But we don't know anything in a longer perspective whether the good results last or, or whether they deteriorate faster or whether they have added, added use of uh, health care. So some long, long term perspectives on that would be nice. Also in Denmark we use some municipalities use private providers of reablement courses. Um, but it's a subject that no one has looked into yet. So if I could choose one I would like to do some research on how private providers of elder care actually work towards making their customer independent of their health because uh, how they make the customer independent of what of, of their services. Okay. A private provider of reablement courses are supposed to work towards making the elder person, their customer, independent of the services in the future. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so that could be interesting looking into how that really works. Uh, and if they have the incentive to, to actually do it. Oh, so you think there might be a conflict of interest I somewhere there? there might be a major conflict of interest. Right. Yeah. Okay. But no one has uh, examined it. Sure. Okay, thank you for explaining that. And I would just like to ask some final questions where you give a number between 1 and 10 to rate your answer, where 1 is low and 10 is high. Um, so across all of the different policies, yeah. um, whether it's uh, business, the economy, transport, um, and healthcare, for example, uh, for um, what uh, priority, what level of priority is, uh, does the government give or policy makers give to uh, social care for adults? Uh, the home care, they give it quite a, a quite high priority uh, in Denmark, I must say, and across the spectrum of political parties and, and also when the Czechs go, they have a quite high, quite high priority. Um, we have some very uh, active um, partners in, in Denmark, uh, Dane Aids, which is an interest group for all elder people who are a very strong player in the area and uh, actually okay. managed to put their footprint on, on quite a lot of legislation and, and always speaking the elders, the elders part. And, and, and we have we have the um, care workers organization, nurses organization, who are also very active players in the area. So quite high priority. Okay. Yeah. So, what, an eight or a nine? Or? In the grand scale? No, I'm afraid not so much. They have other issues in their hands. I, I think I'll give it a seven. seven okay. Yeah. Okay, and how would you rate the level of awareness that the public has about the so, uh, long term social care system for adults? Uh, in general, across the age spectrum, it's high. Uh, I would say nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about the, the way that uh, the system supports people with long-term care needs? How well, how well are they supported, generally? Generally, I would say nine, nine of them. Nine or ten. Absolutely. We have a good system. And how well does the system support uh, family carers? Well, we have actually we have, we have both informal carers and paid family carers. Both are an option. If I should start with paid family carers, they have a high amount of support, both financial and, and um, from the municipality, which they will be operating in. So, in regards to informal care, we also have a high support because we have different uh, options for taking leave for work, for example, to take care of, uh, of, of family members. So we have, we have uh, great opportunities to choose which, uh, whichever way we want to do uh, take care of our elder which we want to be taking care of ourselves. Okay. Okay. And again between one and ten, how would you say 
the social care and health healthcare services are integrated, or how well are they integrated? Well, I don't really have anything to compare it to, and it's actually an area I forgot to mention before because there's an enormous political uh, focus on it right now because of all the difficulties combined those two. But they are actually pretty combined already, and, and yeah. since there is a focus on doing it even better, I would say it would be an added time. Okay. Great. Okay, uh, Leah, thank you very much for your time for sharing your thoughts with us.